Okay, so the very first thing I do is when I pick out my mason stain is I write it on the bag because I found it's more difficult to write it after the clay is colored and in here. So this is dark teal green mason stain 6254. And then that part's done. And a very important other part is to open the bag. <laughs> I found there are several things I found that make it easier. So this is the stain I'm going to use. Don't need the marker anymore. And then I put on gloves. And these gloves are wonderful. They're um, used for health care. But I found the purple ones, they're comfortable. They fit well. And I like them. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put a little bit of water in my cup, about halfway. It's a very tiny cup. It is a very tiny little Dixie drinking cup, but you don't want more, uh, a lot of water. The clay is already, uh, has water in it. And then I don't measure. For those people <laughs> who want to know how much, um, I would say 7% dry stain to start at seven percent dry stain um, per so it would be seven grams of dry stain per seven gr per hundred grams of dry clay and I'm using number 15 cone six okay there we go so there's this there's my stain there's my clay may sustain or the oxide into it a lot better than doing it the hand method. When you're using slip. When you're using slip. So what I do is I just cut off a hunk of clay, about four pounds. So now it's three pounds. And then I found lately I've been using a stainless steel bowl because I found the stainless steel bowl is really nice for mixing the colors. And then all I do is take the clay and I'm using the gloves because of the stain, not because of the clay. And it's always best to be a little bit more careful because if you're using mangus, manganese or copper, chrome, nickel, cobalt, or any other oxide, then it will get on your skin. And we're, we're sensitive humans, aren't we? <laughs> we're sensitive. So here, the thickness of my stain mix is pretty thick. It's like sour cream. And it's really a color saturation preference so if you wanted a lighter tone you would use less stain right percentage okay however the like we were talking earlier the stains they will uh, the, the colorants especially oxides will cause fluxing and so if you put it uh, especially black is tough to mm -hmm. do if you get too much colorant in then it will flux down and it'll start to bubble and bloat. So you don't wanna you don't want to put like a cup of stain in. So then I just I found that the stainless steel bowl is really nice. It keeps it all in here. I was doing it in the sink before, but um, this is a little bit better. And then once you start to get into the clay body usually takes me about 20 minutes to really, when I get started, to really mix it. Then you use what's called a hatchet type method. Virginia Cartwright is the one that I learned from. It's the late, the potter I learned from. And she taught this hatchet method where you just take it and mm -hmm. turn it. Those clays, I usually will color a clay and then at least let it sit at least two weeks before I use it. So this clay, this color, this dark teal green, won't be used today. I'll use the ones I just wanted to color some so people could see how it's colored. And then it's pretty much just wedged in here.
until I get it through. It's like the best bread you've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> it is, you're right. And it's just really nice to get it, you know, all the way through. Some, some colorants, some stains, some oxides, such as cobalt carb and cobalt ox, um, will do, oh, there'll be little pits, little pieces of color that it takes a long time to dissolve. And those really should be ball milled. And so since I do not have a ball mill, So I'm working this in about one pound amounts to get the color. And you can see, like on my gloves, I have different intensity of it. I work this by hand after it's colored, but it's just getting the color into it. It takes a little bit of time there. And then it will just sit for at least two weeks. And I put, I don't usually put the date on there. I just color them all the same day and then I know when I can use them. There we go. So in she goes in here. It's all labeled. Now, since that's been six or two weeks, do you have to double wrap it to keep it moist? Or I do. That's what this is for. <laughs> Good question. And then I put them in a, a, a closed container.